Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, subclip workflows in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, I thought I'd show you another way to work with clips rather than just designating in and out points, and that's the idea of creating subclips. There's no right or wrong. Some people use them, some people don't. They are very useful in longer form, uh, especially if you've been given something that's one clip and it's 30 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, um, and you want to start pulling little pieces out of that. If you just create in and out points, it's easy to lose that in and out point later. If you make a subclip, it's going to stick around. Let's go take a look. So I've got this clip loaded in my source monitor and it's uh, a few minutes long. So if I make this full, you can see it's two minutes, 36, 20. That's how long. And I've cut this into different little pieces and each one is a separate in and out point showing a designated area that I want to cut. There's no difference there. These are not subclips. They're just regular in and out points. Instead of making it that way, when you've designated an, uh, a specific part to a clip, so you can see there's my in and out point that I've set for this particular um, sound bite. Instead of making this just an in and out point over here, you can right click and choose make sub clip. You can also press command U on the Mac, control U on Windows. And the first benefit is you get to name this. So instead of it just being a generic name from the clip, the specific subclip has a name. So I can call this SB003, Soundbite03. The other thing that you have the option of doing is restricting the, the trims to the subclip boundaries. Premiere Pro allows you uh, to have two different kinds of workflows. And again, there's no right or wrong. If you make a subclip where you restrict the subclip boundaries and later on you want to expand it, you can't. You, there is no way around it. You cannot do that. But if you choose to not restrict it, then it's like its own little clip. So let's choose not to restrict this and, and I'll, I'll type no in this. Click OK. And you'll notice there's a different kind of icon down here. That is the sub clip icon. It looks different from a regular clip or a sequence clip. But let's do the same thing again up here. I'm going to hit Control U or Command U on the Mac. And this is Soundbite 003. And I will restrict the trims. Yes. OK. And you'll see it looks exactly the same when I double clicking on them, loads them, and they look pretty much the same in the source monitor. But let's go down the list here and drop in both of these. So I'm just going to drag them from there. And if we start to zoom in, you should see a difference. These little lines right here at the top left and the top right, those little triangles are showing you you're at the clip boundary. Normally those show up if there's no in and out point other than the original clips in and out point. That, that is telling you that uh, you're at the ends of it. If we try to extend this, if I move my trim tool and I'm trying to extend past, I can. I can trim shorter if I want, but I can't go further. Let's look over here, click, and I'm actually extending that. So. Again, no hard and fast rules. If you want to be able to uh, extend those clips, then you can work that way. Now, let's go over here to the one that said, yes, it is a restricted. Let's go over to this one. When I click on it and go to the clip menu, you'll see edit sub clip. And look at this, restrict trims. I can turn this off now, click OK. And you can see in the timeline, I'm turning that on and off. So it is something that is remembered for the subclip in the project panel and it also updates right inside um, the timeline. Let's look at the other settings in there back in clip, edit subclip. So first of all, you can see the master clip start and end and the subclip and you could trim this value here. You could type in a specific value or extend it. And you can see that the end is shifting or the start is shifting and it tells me and then the overall duration. 
And it says down here, when subclips are used in a sequence, shifting the subclips start and end is restricted to prevent the frames from being eliminated in the sequence. So it does restrict you from uh, eliminating any of, of that area that you're trimming. If you convert this back to a master clip, let's watch what, what happens to this icon, Cl convert to master clip, okay. You can see now when I double click on this and zoom all the way out, it's back to the original. So you lose any in and out information. So you don't want to do that. The other interesting thing about subclips, which are based on the master clip, and just to refresh everyone, you're not really changing anything on the disc. These are all references. So when you bring in that large, in my case, two and a half minute, but again, if it's 30 minutes or an hour piece, that master clip is referenced on your uh, disc. Uh, it's a link to that. You're not really bringing it in. When you're making subclips, you're not making new clips. Again, you're referencing the same master clip. The cool thing uh, is that you can actually delete the master clip out of this project and the subclips won't go away. They're still pointing to that. Um, I don't know if there's any benefit to that. I just wanted to, to let you know you can do that. You can also take a clip over here on the right that isn't a subclip. So if we go back to my other clips, uh, when I started this edit, if you take one of these clips, hold the control key down on Windows, command on Mac, and drag back over into the project bin, you'll be prompted with making a sub clip. And again, you can choose to restrict it or not. What you can't do is you can't drag a bunch of them. So you can drag that in uh, one at a time and, and create a sub clip. What you can't do is drag a whole bunch of them uh, because it, you need to name that. It, that little dialog box comes up and it won't name each one. It'll only name the first one. So you have to decide earlier on if you want a sub clip workflow. I just want to show you another quick example here. You can see in, in this one, this again was based off one long clip. But if we go through here, you can see the names are perfect because I can see exactly what animal it is before I even mouse over. And in the past, if I selected this clip here and deleted it, um, that in and out point is now vanished. It's nowhere. It's not in the master clip anymore. Um, so I might lose that. So that's just a great way to, to uh, remember about sub clips is if you're changing your mind a lot and you want you know, a giant bin full of stuff, a bunch of clips that you can play with, that's great. So that's the benefit of working with sub clips for those folks who think uh, they want to use that workflow. I want to say thanks to everyone for the wonderful support here at Video Revealed. It's a very much appreciated. If you're new to Video Revealed, please take a moment and subscribe. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get you looking your best. Thank you.